Hello everybody, how you doing today? It's Superfiend here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Marcus Wolfheart from Warhammer 2's latest DLC, The Hunter and the Beast. This is an early access look, thanks to Creative Assembly and their community managers for allowing me to get my hands on this a little bit early. We will be talking about the new faction campaign mechanics for Marcus Wolfheart. This is a Vortex campaign, but we will also be playing this as a regular Let's Play series. First thing, let's go ahead and zoom out so we can you know, really see our start position here. We start on the northern edge of Lustria, and then of course we have Silostras up over here somewhere. We got Skeggy. The New World Colonies, Hexwaddle. There's some uh, Blue Viper Orcs over here. The runes we could generally assume are Skaven. There's Lizardmen armies nearby. And then, of course, we got Vampire Coast. Um, Lock here, Fellheart down over this way, Teclas, and all that good stuff. Now, in terms of our faction, the faction name, if you're not aware, is the Hunts Marshals Expedition. And let's look at our faction effects. So as a Hunts Marshal of the Empire, we have a very limited roster. And reinforcements will be given to us periodically from the Old World em uh, Empire. And it de basically depends on how we are engaging and behaving ourselves over here in Lustria. It's going to determine how good and how often we get those reinforcements and supplies. Uh, hostile actions will result in retaliation from local factions. More on that in a moment. But it also makes our own armies a little bit stronger. And we get a recruit rank plus three for Huntsman, Huntsman Generals faction wide so if you want to recruit generals that have a few skills for them uh, you want to recruit huntsmen and then we are uh, scouts of the empire we have standard imperial supplies received and we get a recruit rank plus two for all imperial supplies units and then we have a unit cap of one for all of the empire standard heroes over here let's go ahead and uh, look down here at marcus's starting army we have marcus wolfhart here He's got okay-ish armor and so-so leadership. I think his speed is pretty typical. Uh, he's got good range at 180, and he does really high uh, missile damage at 556. He's got bonus versus large, and he does have armor piercing. He he shoots missiles uh, like, like freight trains, okay? They hit really hard. They do good damage. Uh, we start off at war with Tlaklan over here. I have a always have a hard time pronouncing that and this starting army of theirs has a feral the Cilodon. it's kind of a hard battle your starting empire units have a real struggle of a time against the standard lizard bent troops so the first thing we're going to do here is probably start recruiting but before we do that let's talk about some of the new mechanics at the top of the screen here we have our treasury and our income return that's pretty standard but then we have a claim and hostility and imperial supplies so let's talk about the acclaim uh, you can see it's a resource that uh, has three factors that can increase it and one factor that seems to make it go down and what increases it is hunters being unlocked settlements captured ports built or upgraded and if we lose territory it goes down now there's uh, various ranks here and so currently we are scouts of the empire we have standard imperial supplies received at a recruit rank of plus two for all imperial supply units at 20 acclaim we will become imperial guardians we'll have advanced imperial supplies received recruit rank plus two unlocks construction of barracks and livery buildings so our building construction is locked behind these acclaim levels and we also get a diplomatic penalty with lizard men at the imperial guardians level moving up to hunts marshals elites we get advanced imperial supplies at a recruit rank of plus three and a little bit more of a penalty with uh lizard men in diplomacy vanquishers of evil we have elite imperial supplies received so that's uh that's a little bit different than the prior rank um, at plus three recruit rank unlocks construction of menagerie and foundry buildings and a further um, diplomatic penalty with lizard men scourge of the emperor's foes we get elite imperial supplies is that the same as this one yeah so that is now the same here recruit rank plus three so that doesn't change and then it unlocks construction of the engineer's workshop buildings and then now we have a 50 diplomatic penalty uh, with lizard men now at the final rank champions of the empire it's still elite imperial supplies at a recruit rank of plus four and progress in the emperor's mandate which i assume is this um, will no longer be lost now if we go down here towards hostility as we um, basically take settlements and fight the lizard men and whatnot 
we increase our hostility levels, and these have a um, pretty drastic effect on the enemies that we fight. So looking at the first one here, uh, Imperial Supplies are dispatched at low frequency, and we have a minus one public order penalty in all provinces, and that's stacked on top of uh, any public order penalty from the difficulty that you play at. At level two, Imperial Supplies are dispatched at normal frequency, so low frequency here and normal frequency at the next level another minus one public order penalty so minus two total at level three imperial supplies are dispatched at high frequency this is kind of your sweet spot enemy leadership now gets a plus five bonus enemy weapon strength is now plus 10 percent stronger and we keep the same minus two public order penalty at severely hostile imperial supplies are dispatched at very high frequency enemy leadership is at plus a enemy weapon strength is at plus 15 percent still a minus two public order penalty and at the highest level imperial supplies are dispatched immediately hostility level resets to zero after five turns enemy leadership is at plus 10 enemy weapon strength is at plus 25 and public order is at minus five all provinces so if you hit this level five rank you probably want to like move all your armies back and avoid combat while you take advantage of the imperial supplies that are available immediately and you probably just want to avoid combat for five turns and then kind of start over i think the third tier is kind of your sweet spot uh let's go ahead let's move marcus back and we're gonna start off with a little bit of recruitment now i've noticed because i've played i've i've started the campaign up a couple times here every once in a while you get lucky and you get some sea treasure out here and uh, if you do want to reroll your campaign to get that, it might be smart to go out with Marcus, pick it up real quick, force march back into the Temple of Tlenkan. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to pull back into reinforcement range, and we're going to take a moment here to get some more missile units to fight Rockjar. And I think what I want is a couple more units of archers and a unit of spearmen, some anti-large to counter their uh, large dinosaur. We're also going to bring in another Lord and we're going to bring in a Huntsman General. They come in at rank four. So you can see all of our other Lords here are rank one and a another Huntsman would probably help us a lot in knocking out their large unit here. I'm going to go ahead and pick, I'm going to pick Ralph because he's got the increased campaign movement range. I love campaign movement range. Huntsman I think it's General. one of the greatest abilities you can get for any of your armies in terms of uh, boosts and whatnot uh looking through here we are not going to spend our initial points in route marcher i, I kind of tend to like to do that but we're not going to do that right now uh we want let's see bonus versus large plus eight for spearmen and halberders bonus versus infantry plus eight for great swords we're not going to need that right away range increase for huntsmen and archers that's kind of handy dandy um i don't think we need that right away i think we're gonna put our first points in here and this is a boost for all allies in range so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna get that and then we will increase our base missile damage and the idea behind this is to give us a little bit of extra firepower for this feral Basilidon that we'll probably be fighting relatively soon. And we can't recruit anything else. Now, going back to the supplies, the Imperial supplies, when the, we have a little timer right here that's got an hourglass and a four. So we're going to get our first supplies in four turns. And if we can increase our hostility level, um, well, no, I don't think this will change the, uh, the supplies that we get. We have to increase our acclaim. So if we can manage to get 20 acclaim by fighting... Rock Jor and taking his settlement before four turns is up. We could get slightly better supplies. I don't know that we'll be able to do that. Well, maybe we can. And then once the supplies are here, uh, this button will unlock. And it's essentially a raise dead mechanic for Empire. It's very similar to raise dead. It's just tied behind some more interesting campaign mechanics. And it is quite fun. And I do enjoy it. Let's go back and look at Marcus once more really quick. Uh, the archer or the huntsman, these huntsman units, these are very good. Anti-large vanguard deployment. They have stock. They have pretty good damage. Okay, their missile damage. It says it's only 21, uh, but it does do quite a bit of damage. These guys, they hit pretty hard with their missiles. And then I really like the war wagons. Um, they're classified as a missile chariot, and they're really worthwhile. The the war wagons are probably the best missile chariots i've used um 
in any of the campaigns where I've used missile chariots. Missile chariots as a whole are one of the units I use like almost never. They're, they're like I hate missile chariots, but the war wagons are really quite worthwhile. And we're going to go ahead here and look at our tech tree really quick. I know we're kind of off to a slow start. If you've been watching other YouTubers, you've probably seen a lot of this already. Uh, but it's divided up between your infantry, cavalry, war machines, missiles. We are going to be boosting our missiles first, going first for ammunition increase, then reload reduction time. And then we'll probably go for missile damage. Yeah, probably rifled barrels because this is for crossbowmen, huntsmen, and archers. And then we might go for mounted weaponry. I'm not sure. Um, definitely, I want these first three. And then we got some stuff in here that boosts research rate, income from industry, construction cost reduction, income from mines and gold mines, and then construction time reduction. Down over here, we have hero capacity for captains and battle wizards and increased recruitment ranks. Uh, increased recruitment ranks for what looks to be mostly war machines. And then over here, recruitment time reduction for some war machines. And then hero action cost reduction and hero action success chance increase. Colonial factors over here, we got growth in public order. Uh, if you pick up this very first ability here, it essentially offsets the negative public order from the different levels of acclaim or hostility, whichever it was. We have additional tradable resources, recruit rank increase for infantry units. We have income from settlement buildings, 10%. Income from trade, 10%. Upkeep reduction for, looks like mostly cavalry. Global recruitment capacity and local recruitment capacity. We have Lord recruit rank and warrior priest and winch hunters and untainted um, faction wide. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at these down here because they're unlocked behind a hefty treasury sum. We will look at these though. Recruit rank plus two for all Imperial supplies. So if you want to bring your Imperial supply units in at uh, plus four, then you might want to spend five turns getting this. Casualty replenishment rate plus 10%. That could be handy. It also has a nice little public order plus one. We have construction cost and time reduction here for ports, which is pretty good. And because uh, building ports does increase our acclaim and then receive an additional detachment of reinforcements with every Imperial supplies. Now, I'm not sure if that means like one extra, like extra units or um, other types of supplies. I'm not really sure what is considered a detachment. Um, I, I would assume it's units. And then we'll take a look at Wolfheart's Hunters in just a moment for now. Let's end our turn. And let's get some recruitment. I'm not sure exactly what these guys will do. Uh, what we'll probably do is with our, our new general, our new Huntsman general, we'll probably like move out into a vulnerable position and set up an ambush with Marcus. Marcus has increased bonus to ambush success and ambush defense so i imagine you're probably going to want to spend a lot of time setting up ambushes with marcus as your main army uh, we start off here with the training field i'm not going to bother upgrading this i don't think we really need to spend the money on that we have a port uh, i think the first goal here in terms of uh, campaign gameplay is to uh, defeat the army at chotek and take the settlement and get it ranked up to a tier three settlement with a garrison building with walls uh, now with marcus let's go ahead and move over to here we can see we have a hundred percent ambush success chance uh, in fact marcus is no we're gonna stay in our territory so we can replenish and then now let's come up with our next army here and uh, i want to only use 50 percent. well i guess it doesn't really matter and then we have 900 income per turn right now we have four thousand in our treasury Let's go ahead and grab a another unit of spearmen. Two more units of archers. We'll probably transfer them into Marcus's army when we can. And there's really not much else we could do right now. We could try to open up for trade with um, possibly the New World colonies. However, it's only going to bring in 55 income per turn. That's really not that much. Uh, we do have a non-aggression pact with them. And you probably have to wait 10 turns before you remove this if you want to avoid diplomatic penalties, if you do wish to remove it. I don't think we're going to um, embark on any diplomacy, at least not initially. And let's see if the Lizardmen will come out and attack our reinforcing army and fall for the ambush. I'm hoping that they will. And here we go. Now, do we get the ambush? The ambush is successful. Uh, we could probably auto-resolve this with pretty good results, but being uh, an early battle, we're going to go ahead and just fight this manually. 
we're going to want to focus most of our fire on the Basilodon and do our best to hold the Lizardmen in place with our other units. Uh, once again, Marcus does a lot of damage with his ranged attack, but he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lizardmen infantry uh, quite well. He has a harder time with the Lizardmen lords. Now, our reinforcing lord is coming on over here. And they are off over here. So I think what we want to do... I think what we want to do is... We're going to set our spearmen right there. Now, do they have missile units? I think they got some skinks in here. They do. So let's go ahead and put our shields in the front. Oh, we're going to put these ones right here. And let's put our swordsmen, I think, over here. Now, lizardmen being lizardmen, you know, they got those real um, crafty noses. They may be able to smell us. We're going to put our archers uh, back over here. This unit, I'm going to put like a little further back. And I'm going to put Marcus by Watch them. And then we're forgetting our war wagon. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. Uh, let's see. I think we could use this to to hassle their skink cohort right off the bat. Okay, and I'm going to turn guard mode off on everybody and on Marcus and the Huntsman unit. I'm going to turn off fire at will. I'm going to turn off fire at will with these guys as well. And then our reinforcements will come on by our main army. And over here, we're going to hassle these guys as best we can. And you'll see what I mean about the, the war wagons being pretty good missile chariots. We outrange the Skink Cohort. We'll do pretty good damage to them. And then uh, we'll just kind of kite them around and hassle them until we're out of our ammunition if we can. And here, let's uh, bring that guy over there. Okay. And we'll kite them around. And then when we run out of ammunition, we'll just use it like a regular chariot. Uh, but it's going to be a real helpful unit here in this like little first engagement. Okay, they look like they're going to get some missiles off on us. We don't want that to happen. Yes, my lord. Go. Take the ground. Now, does this guy not have ranged attacks? No, he does. Turn off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we should be able to outrun them. We'll kite them and do damage. I think they hit us with some poison. Sir, we serve the Just keep it moving, guys. You guys are fine. Nothing to worry about. Now. Okay, we're doing pretty good damage to these guys, shooting them point blank as they chase us here. There you go. Look at all the the outriders in the back there. I love how they got the little the little um, slots here that they can kind of peek over. Okay, they're turning around and uh, running away again. They don't like being shot in the face for a point blank range. And I love how these guys just shoot out the back. Uh, really fun unit. Really fun unit. Okay, have they smelled us? Not quite. Keep chasing us. And which unit are we shooting at? It, it almost looks to me like we're shooting at the skinks. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready for war. Take Let's come up here with those guys. Yeah, we have been spotted. The jig is up. Okay, let's move out here with them. And we want to absolutely blast this thing over here. I'm going to kite with the uh, war wagon a little bit. Let's come up with these guys. And we want to absolutely blast away the Bastilladon here. I'm going to go ahead and let loose with our special abilities. The oil flask, enemy magic missile, 70 meters. This one's 200 meters. Okay, we're going to bring our... Missile Chariot, our War Wagon, into the Skink Cohort. The I probably should have put this guy over near the other um, missile units because he does boost their damage. 
But here we go. We're going to see the war wagon charging into the skinks here in just a moment. Come on, guys. Unload on this Harold Bastilladon. Get these guys. Now, the skinks can't even turn around the fire at us. If they do, we'll run into them. And we can see here now this guy's health is really starting to drop. Are we in range for this? Looks like we're in range for that. We've broken here. That's okay. And the skink cohort is taking lots of damage. Uh, it does look like we finally caught them over there. Okay, let's get this guy in here to tie up uh, this unit. The Bastilladon is still up. Did I call this the skink cohort earlier? Yeah, skink cohort with javelins. Okay, just stay on them. Uh, let's pull out now with the war wagon. This thing is fleeing, but we are not going to stop shooting it. Okay. And I'll just charge in with one of our missile units and tie these guys up in combat. I really want to get this thing off the battlefield as quickly as I can. Is this guy going to be able to get his magic missile out of there? I don't know. Hey, the skinks are pursuing. We have uh, regained our morale. So let's come back in here and let's get out with these guys. Yeah, I think we need a charge right over here into this cohort. Come on, get these guys. Smash them. Smash them. And now they're turning all their attention over here to our archers. Okay, as soon as this thing's in range, we'll just start blasting it again. We don't want to fight this bad boy. Uh, let's get on the javelins. Shoot this thing. See, now we've broken over here, okay? So it's a hard starting battle. Our Empire troops... I uh, just don't do so great against the standard lizardmen. Uh, but the war wagon is uh, very strong as a chariot. And as soon as we get rid of this thing over here, we'll be looking better. Uh, these are our huntsmen. So I want to get them out of here if I can. Uh, shoot the skinks. Okay, we broke these guys. So let's see. 70, 69 versus 71. Let's come over here. And this unit will continue to chase the cohort. This unit will reinforce our lords. These are our huntsmen are now broken. Swordsmen have both come back. We've taken a lot of damage. No, come back. Come back. Get in here. Okay, they are all over our war wagon back there. That's fine. And how we looking? We need to get this guy away from their lord. And we need to position these guys where they can shoot this stuff. Okay, here come the javelin unit coming back. These guys look like they're gone for good. Let's reposition here. Okay, we're going to bring the other unit of spearmen back. Come on, we just need to get these missiles over here. This right here. See, they've regrouped now, but they got a long, uh, a long walk to get back here. These guys are back now, so let's bring them back. All right, let's shoot this stuff over here. You can shoot their lord. Okay, the war wagon is in. It's a rough opening battle. Okay, now we're getting some fire in here. Let's put the spears right here. And let's go ahead and hit the Lord with our magic missile. First one and then the other. And we'll start shooting the Soros Warriors over here. Let's get our war wagon out. We still have all four units or all four uh, carts, wagons. Okay, shooting this guy. Okay, Marcus is having trouble now. Okay, these guys have returned. It's a really tough opening battle. Keep shooting these guys. Come on. Okay, we broke that unit again. Let's come over here and defend from the javelins again. Let's go knock 
the cohort around. Okay, we finally got that stuff. Let's get this here. All of our missile units shoot this. And who is this in here? This is Ralph now fighting their lord. Yeah, let's get Ralph out of here. Now, his, uh, his special ability here, the focus shot, and it's got a 250 meter range, and the unit has to be a single entity. So you can't use it on garrison lords or anything like that. It's got to be a single target. Uh, I finally got rid of this stuff. And let's see if we can unload one of those point blank into this guy here. It creates that little yellow reticle above him. He's powering up. No, what are you doing? Come on, shoot him. No, no, shoot. Shoot. Why are you charging in? You don't need to be doing that. Okay, so I think we've pretty much won. We're just fighting the Lord here. Let's get all of our infantry. Okay, Marcus isn't shooting his thing. <laughs> Shoot your darn missile, Marcus. Okay, so that was a rough fight. Even though we had the ambush and everything, it's just, it's a rough opening fight. Uh, once you get through it, though, uh, the campaign does start to get a lot easier, I think. Can I get over here, guys? Uh, you're out of ammunition, so don't do anything. Okay, here he goes. He's charging towards us. He ate something to the face with the dark cloud. There it is. Bam. That was a pretty good hit. He's got his shield up, uh, but he's not going to make it. He's shattered. He finally goes down and dies. Good grief. And that's also, um, if you look at our casualties here, this is one of the reasons why I set up the ambush in allied territory. Because uh, we need that replenishment. And then we are recruiting with the second lord. So we may be able to push up and immediately attack the garrison or attack the settlement. I don't know if the Bastilodon died. I think it's got like a tiny sliver of health left. So uh, it'll still be around, but we can take it down with our missiles pretty quick. And uh, as we get our technology unlocked for our missile damage and firing rate increase. We'll be doing a lot more damage with our missile units to the lizards as they close in with us. Any lost? Uh, we're going to go ahead here. We're going to take the leadership. I don't want to hurt our replenishment by taking the money. Okay, so they run back into the settlement. We've got a skill point with Marcus, it looks like. And it says recruit a unique hunter. We'll get 500 if we do that. A follower gained ambush defense chance plus 15% for Marcus's army. So that brings him up to, I think, like 65% and some untainted. Uh, enemy killed in battle. Rock Jor. Uh, we have another quest. So we have... Okay, this is Elite Hunter. Recruit a unique hunter. But then here we have capture and occupy a settlement belonging to the following faction. Tluxlon. And I think we'll be able to do that uh, pretty soon. Land provides. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead here and let's transfer units yeah. over. Huntsman General, I just want to peek. Peekaboo. Uh, so we got two turns here. Uh, they're in a force march stance, so they're not going to be recruiting General. right now. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull back and we'll Tenso. go into our encampment stance. Marcus encampment stance. And let's go ahead and recruit some more. Uh, I think I think we could use lizard beasts. another unit of spears, two units of swords. We don't need to do any building right now, and let's spend Marcus, a skill point with Marcus. And I think we want to go down his line right here to increase his individual damage, because I really think he's going to be the hero of the day and knocking out some of the lizard men's big beasts and monsters. He, he does a lot of damage, and I'd really like to get his damage up high and early for taking out those big monsters. Not much else we can do, so we're going to go ahead and end our turn here. I don't think the lizards can recruit, so next turn we can push up an attack with a pretty good size force. Only surrender will save your and I like the way this looks. All right. 
So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use our individual lord to lay siege. On the trail. And we'll strike encircle. Fast, strike fast. Into the fray. And um, Marcus, all by his lonesome, he can keep the whole settlement alone uh, at bay. Do so let's push up and attack the lord here, who now will. runs. Ha 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 ha. No way. They will fall. Uh, this. Ooh. Um. We cannot we'll auto resolve this one. That came out okay. We'll take the leadership once more. And then we're going to break the siege. Combat awaits. Back off. We're there. Uh, Marcus now has eight armor piercing damage from a biting blade. Monster Got another hunter. skill point here. We're going to go for sure and true. This affects allies in range. On the hunt. I, I mean, look Your at the balance of power here. Be a like, yeah. Huntsman General. Okay, we'll bring up our That's other it. army. We're going to fight this manually because the auto resolve Seek, is um, really not in our favor. Hunt them down. Uh, but I think we'll do pretty Engage good here. And this time we want to make sure that both of our generals are kind of embedded in our missile the units because they have abilities that increase missile damage from nearby allies. So we're going to want to take advantage of that for this battle. Are these all missile units? Seems like a lot of missile units if it is. Uh, with our war wagon, uh, let's see here. Okay, so we have a slight hill. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this unit here, or these two units here. Um, I think they have missiles, so I'm going to sacrifice this unit of spearmen. Swordsman. And uh, let's see. I'm going to put these guys back over here. The and Show us back the them bow. up. Do we have any other good deployment spots? No, I think this is good enough. Now, with our missile units, we'll just plop them all back here. Our huntsmen a little bit more forward. Uh, maybe we'll move the war wagon out a little bit further. Guard mode off on everybody. And Marcus right here. And if we open up his abilities... So he's boosting almost all of our missile units right there. If we slide him over just a little bit. All right, that's all of our missile units. I've got that buff from him now. And what exactly does it do again? <laughs> Reload skill increase, missile damage, armor piercing damage, 5% on those other ones. Okay, uh, this unit, uh, these are spearmen with shields. So I'm going to put them kind of like right here. And with these guys, we're just going to rush out here and eat their missiles. And then we're going to come up with, uh, let's see. I guess we'll move over here at this guy. By Ulrich's rock. And so they'll hopefully waste all their ammunition uh, yeah. shooting these guys. And then even when we break and flee, they'll continue to waste their an ammunition. And they don't have a whole lot uh, to use. Marcus, so I think this is a, uh, a good use of this very weak unit. With Marcus, we'll go ahead and shoot Bestelbus. And we'll shoot him with the Huntsman as well. Okay, really starting to unload. We want to knock out the Coldman Spear Riders. I'm going to put our War Wagon kind of off to the side here. Okay, doing good damage there. Uh, we can't use this ability on anything in this army because it's on single targets only. Firing here at this stuff. Uh, we can shoot this though. Okay, let's get our war wagon around the side and our missile or swordman unit around the side also. We're doing good here. This king cohort with javelins, they wasted all their ammunition. 
Okay, we've broken those. We're gonna keep shooting them for a little bit. And we'll come out to the side here. Firing into their flank here. And let's go ahead and charge in with the war wagon. And then run down the line with the war wagon and we'll follow up with our swordsmen. War wagon is uh, very stuck. Uh, these guys ran forward. Okay, let's turn these guys this way so we can fire uh, into their backs. Okay, it looks like more of their stuff is starting to break. Let's bring this guy off this way. Let's come over here with Marcus. Come over here with these guys. Let's fire into them. Bring our war wagon back. Okay, shoot all this stuff in the back. Don't give them an inch. Okay, so we should win this battle pretty soon here. There it is. It's a pretty good opening, I think, for the Marcus campaign. I think I do think if you try to fight that initial battle against the Lizardmen with Marcus's starting army, I do think it's winnable. However, I think you'll take a lot of casualties, and it will take you a handful of turns before you're strong enough to move up and assault the settlement if you don't bring a second lord up and start recruiting. I can't really imagine how else I would start this campaign. It's kind of hard to think of anything that would work better. Hey, we'll go ahead and occupy. That is province secured. Capture and occupy. So we get 500 for our treasury. Maintain control of two provinces, either by direct ownership or through vassals and military allies. And we'll get another 500 into our treasury for that. And our hostility level has increased. Okay, so Imperial Supplies, well, it says it increased, but I don't really see it. It's up to 13, 13. So uh, seven from settlements looted, occupied, or raised. Uh, six from armies attacked and defeated. So that's a total of 13, and we would need to get, okay, so now we're at uh, level one. And we'll need seven more to get up to 20, and our claim is only at three. So we got a long ways to go to get up to 20. We got a banner gained for Ralph Uderiker and a follower gained for Marcus Wolfhart. Casualties captured post battle. That's pretty good. Comrades let's pop in here and let's take the banner from the other guy. And do we have anything else that we can equip? Not really. The wild makes warriors. Nothing new in here, but we do have a skill point. We're going to go ahead and get the second level of destroy the heart. Okay, and Marcus, Marcus can't move any further, but we do have a skill point with him. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the Stray the Heart with him as well to increase his own missile damage for our commandment. Um, we have recruitment cost reduction and local recruitment capacity. Not bad. Uh, income from trade and growth. We have increased tax rate, untainted. Corruption and enemy hero action success chance reduction and then public order. I'm going to pick the growth because I really do want to get this leveled up to rank uh, three as fast as possible with walls. I think our starting city, uh, even though it doesn't have a, a great garrison, I think we can get over and defend it in time if we need to. And now let's take a moment and look at Wolfpart's hunters. I'm sure if you've been watching other footage, you've already kind of seen this. Uh, but we have the witch hunter, the dwarf the wood elf and the bretonian knight and it's the let's see i think it's the witch hunter and the wood elf that are the easiest to unlock so uh, we'll unlock the wood elf when we raise our hostility level to very hostile so essentially once we win one or two more battles um, over here in lustria we'll get the wood elf and uh, i think it's a she she's pretty good and then the Witch Hunter is not that hard either. Be at war with the following faction, Vampire Coast Mutineers. I think uh, I think we can see them now, Vampire Coast Mutineers. So we are going to go ahead and just declare war to these guys, like right now. And there we go. Uh, mission successful. Recruit a unique hunter. Treasury increased by 500. Van Hal is his name. Joins the expedition. While following... Oh, good grief. 
While following a trail through the dense jungle canopy, you stumbled upon a clearing strewn with dead bodies. They looked like seafarers, senior admiralty of some sort perhaps, but stranger still was the fact that each had a stake through the chest and was decapitated. On closer inspection, you realized they were already dead before they met this gruesome fate. In fact, not dead, but undead, vampires. A few nights later, a mysterious man emerged from the jungle, introducing himself as Hertwig von Hall. His garb indicated he was a witch hunter of the Empire, but he revealed himself to be the healer you have been seeking. Explaining your cause to him, explaining your cause to him, you asked him to join the expedition. He accepted, but on one condition, that you help him with his own mission in Lustria in return. And so now that we've done that, if we come over here and we look at his character sheet, which this is like a really nice layout for these. Uh, we've done the first thing, and then uh, now we've got another thing, Air Doctor. And you can go back through and read these things. I'm not going to spend time reading them here in the, uh, in the videos. I don't want to spoil everything. Uh, but let's see. He has a current objective. Move one hero to one region owned by the following race, Vampire Coast. And we'll get focused, which is hero action success chance plus 8%. Enemy hero action success chance minus 10%. I'm not sure. I guess that's faction wide. And then hunter specialties. He is a slayer of undead, proficient at laying the dead to rest permanently. A flexible role. He can be specialized as either a veteran warrior or a supporting healer. Now, I think that's rather new for witch hunters. I don't recall that witch hunters had any healing abilities in, um, in the old empire stuff. And a final battle effect, which I'm not sure how we get that. I, I'm not entirely sure. But allied reinforcements will arrive during the final battle. That's pretty cool. Or maybe this is just having him uh, in the final battle. Okay, so final battle effect, welcome reinforcements. If we come over to our victory objectives, our campaign victory, uh, win the following battle, battle for Itza. So I think if he's just present, then... Um, he'll have that effect in the final battle. We'll get some reinforcements. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so let's right, see here. Uh, he pops in right here. We're going to go ahead and embed him into no Wolfheart's army. Uh, for Wolfheart, we will go ahead, I think, and start some more recruitment. I want to get another unit of spearmen, but I also want to pick up some free company militia. And then uh, we'll probably be pretty close to like maybe one or 200 income per turn. And we'll end our turn here. Uh, we can see that we have encountered the defenders of the great plan. That is the vassal faction that is created by Nakai when he uh, gifts them settlements. And Slan Wapek is united against us. Okay. Oh. Okay, our first batch of Imperial supplies has arrived, and we can pick from Imperial regiments, so we can get two Halbeerders, two Huntsmen, and a unit of Great Swords. Uh, knightly Orders, we can get three Empire Knights and two Pistoliers. Imperial Gunnery School, that will get us a Great Cannon and Outriders. Uh, or we can get War Machine Reinforcements, which will get us a War Wagon and a War Wagon slash Mortar. And... Um, you know, I really want to show off the new units. So as nice as it is to possibly get a lot of Empire Knights and Pistoliers or Great Swords so early in the campaign, uh, keep in mind that you do have to pay upkeep for these units, okay? So they become part of the Imperial Supply Pool, but you have to pay upkeep for them. So it's not like they're free units. Uh, they're free to recruit. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pick the Imperial Engineers, and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll read this. The expedition may have only just begun, but the Emperor demands progress. To aid you, the Imperial Quartermaster sends word of reinforcements ready to dispatch to the expedition. The four main divisions of the Empire's military each has a package ready. Choose whose shipment you would like to receive. We're going to go ahead and take the war machines. And then we have a mission issued. Ensure that one of the following buildings have been constructed. Coastal Town. And we'll get 500 to our treasury for doing that. We also have another mission issued, research a technology. We're one turn away from getting our first missile unit uh, technology and then Imperial supplies received. So now if we come over here to Marcus, we can see that we can recruit from the Imperial supply pool. As I said, very similar to the raised dead mechanic. And these cost nothing to recruit. I think they stay in here forever, but don't quote me on that. 
and uh, but they are 329 and 344 upkeep per turn if we want to um, use these units. So for right now, I'm not going to recruit them. Uh, what we will do is, well, let's see. I kind of want to come over here and, and attack the undead because we are at war with them. Wait, what happened here? Yeah, we're at war with you. Oh, you know why? It's because I had clicked on this army over here. Uh, who is this, by the way? The Freebooters of Port Royal. Oh, no. She is race hostility level to very hostile. Okay, I thought we had to be at war with a, another faction to unlock the Wood Elf. That's not true. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We are going... Um, do we still recruit when we're in the water here? We do. Uh, we lose access to the recruit from Imperial Supplies. We got uh, 6,000 income right now. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and bring in the two war wagons. That puts us a little bit negative. I'm okay with that. I don't mind being negative for a couple turns. Oh, we have a building up right here, 1,600. Let's come out and pick up the remnants of battle. Uh-oh, undead on their way. We will perform better in battle. So we have Seed of Rebirth. Oh, this is this is lovely. Replenishes hit points of combatants. We've got regeneration. And in Sorcelled Blades, melee attack, melee defense for a few turns. Uh, oh, the Seed of Rebirth. I thought it was a whole army effect. No, we've gotten a Talisman. We are going to give this Talisman to, to Marcus. And let's look at the uh, let's look at the skill tree for this guy because I want to see what his healing abilities look like. So I'm very curious. This this all looks like extremely standard witch hunter stuff. talked about him becoming a good healer maybe it's through some sort of item that he can get we'll pop in here we look at this again flexible role he could be specialized as either a veteran warrior or a supporting healer well i'm not seeing that in the skill tree so i'm kind of curious like how is that all how's that going to work in any case, let's not dwell Marcus on it for too long. Uh, these guys, they can pretty much get here. So here's what we're going to do. Last beast. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the settlement. Marcus, and Go now, how far can they move? I want to draw them out of position. So we're just going to move to right here with Leave Ralph. I'm pretty sure that if they attack him, we'll be able to retreat Husband outside General. of range. Uh, if they happen to kill him, well, we'll just recruit another. <laughs> he's only gained one uh, skill point since we picked him up. So he's not he's super good. Uh, in fact, disbanding him would probably be a good idea, too, to save ourselves some upkeep. We're spending 313 per turn on him, and we're uh, negative by 333. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more end turn here. I'm expecting the undead to go attack him. We'll run, and then we'll have a nice battle, I think, with Marcus. And the undead. No, they, they come up to the settlement. Wasn't expecting that. Really was not expecting that. Okay. Our first technology is researched. So we've earned uh, 500 for our treasury. Search any rune settlement for treasury, treasure. And we'll get 500 to our yeah, treasury for that. Right. And we now have increased ammunition for free company, militia, crossbowmen, huntsmen, archers, handgunners, pistoliers, and outrider missile units. Let's take a look at the undead army here. They have a bloated boy. They got some zombie pirate gunnery mobs, but then it's a bunch of meat shield units. So we've got the mortar here. Uh, we've got the swordsmen and stuff that could kind of hold them at bay. I, I think we're relatively safe. I think we're relatively safe. Uh, does, does our building upgrade provide a different garrison? Two spearmen, two swordsmen, two crossbows. Uh, yeah, so how long for that? Two turns. 
So I'm kind of thinking that we want to wait. Uh, until the building is upgraded before we attack. Did we get our, our reinforcements? No, he's outside the range. Uh, in any case, we're going to end this one here. Let me know if you enjoyed this with comments or thumbs up. I'm enjoying it. I think we're off to a good start. And I do look forward to playing this campaign and having a lot of fun with the latest addition to the Empire. Thanks again to Creative Assembly for the early access. Check out the rest of the channel. If you're new, consider subscribing. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. You have a great afternoon and take care.